The bipartisan infrastructure bill set aside a big pot of money with the goal of developing renewable energy and electric vehicle technology here in the U.S. And that legislation is expected to increase the demand of critical mineral components like lithium used to make EV batteries. Now, Piedmont Lithium is slated to receive funds in one of the first rounds of federal grants to develop their mining operations here in the States. And joining me to discuss this and what it means for investors is Keith Phillips. He's the CEO of Piedmont Lithium. So Keith, it's great to have you back here with us. And as we just mentioned, Piedmont Lithium was selected to receive a grant from the U.S. Department of Energy in the neighborhood of about $141 million uh, this October. Can you break down some of the details and what this means for investors? Uh, yeah, Alexis, thanks for having me on again. Uh, the grant was very exciting. It's part of the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act uh, that was enacted earlier this year. So it's a $141.7 million grant toward our Tennessee Lithium Project, which will be the largest lithium hydroxide plant ever built in the U.S. or North America. We hope to begin construction next summer and be in production of lithium hydroxide in, in 2025. So it's very exciting. It's a $600 million capital project. So it's a very significant amount of capital from uh, for a company our size, particularly given the other uh, projects we're building and the capital requirements they have. So we're very grateful uh, to have received that grant. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the timelines here of when you think this will be finalized and how do you think this will affect operations moving forward? It's a work in progress. I think the, the DOE made several grants. I forget, I think 20, 21 or two total grants to different people. So there's some administrative work to be done on both sides, as you can imagine, to set up uh, the right protocols to make sure we're spending the money appropriately and at the right time. So that work's going on. That'll, that'll take several months, actually. And the grant, as I understand it, will essentially be a matching grant. So as we invest and spend money in the project, uh, it'll be matched up to the limit of the grant. Uh, on some basis to be finalized. So I think everyone's in the same boat. Uh, the, the details are still to be worked out, but the amount of money is set out and clear and committed, and it's it's just now working out, out the details. So we'll be spending, uh, again, a $600 million capital project to be built over two years. Uh, typically, the way you fund a project is the equity comes in first, and then the, whatever loan you might uh, have associated with the project, whatever project finance debt you might have comes later. The lender won't give you the money until you've committed your equity. So uh, the first thing we'll do, so we're working on um, you know, debt financing opportunities, including with the Department of Energy's ATVM program. Um, and we've got an application with them. We're also talking to some other potential other sources, but the equity will have to go in up front. We do hope to make some long lead item orders in the first half of next year before construction starts. Uh, you know, there's a bottleneck of people trying to build these plants and, and it'll take time to get material. So um, I would hope we're making long lead orders in the first six months of the year, pretty considerable amount of capital. Hopefully uh, some of that would be matched. We'll have more details on that over the next several weeks. And speaking of bottlenecks, you know, we've seen with this legislation and just the growing adoption of electric vehicles, this huge increase in demand for these minerals like lithium. Can you give us a sense of what that market is like and kind of the supply and demand balance uh, right now? Well, it's a good question. It's, it's um, you know, electrification is happening globally, uh, particularly in the vehicle sector. So uh, elect I, I believe electric vehicle penetration. So the percentage of cars sold in China that is electric is now over 25%. It's 15 to 20 percent in Europe. It's six or seven or eight percent here in the U.S. So this is a very large market. It's, it's probably now the fastest growing market, starting from a, a relatively low base. Every one of these electric vehicles uh, needs a battery. Every battery needs lithium. We don't believe there'll be nearly enough lithium to supply the entire world's uh, demand over the next several years. I think it'll take 10 plus years for the market to get to equilibrium. It takes a long time to bring um, raw material projects online, particularly mining project. It's typically 8, 10, 15 years to bring a mining project online from kind of the first drill hole to production. Uh, and that's a process that's hard to hurry. It's hard to rush it. Uh, so I think demand is occurring really quickly. Um, I believe everyone is going to want an electric vehicle by 2025 or 30 for sure. That we won't be able to produce enough, that's for sure. Um, and the constraint will be, it won't be because the car companies can't do it. It'll be because there won't be enough raw material 
to get into the batteries, to get into the cars. We've definitely seen that uh, affect some of the, the prices of these vehicles. And I'm interested in, in kind of your sense of where the, the lithium prices will settle, because I think when we talked earlier this year, there had been a spike. Prices have basically quadrupled, if not more, over the year. You know, is, is there room to keep going up? Um, you know, how do you expect that these prices will remain elevated for some time as we try to get that equilibrium? You know, it's anybody's guess. Um, I'm, 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 I would say I'm very bullish the rest of this decade. I break the world into sort of you know, the lithium market into three periods. I think we'll get to a point in certainly the 2050s, probably the 2040s, where lots of lithium has been discovered and brought into production. Uh, recycling will be a factor, far bigger factor than it is today. Um, and demand will have moderated. Everybody will already have an electric car. There will be other applications, but I think demand w- won't be growing 20% a year forever. But I think it will be growing that rate in the 2020s. We won't have nearly enough material. So I think we'll have a, a tight lithium market uh, on average for the next 10 to 15 years. There could be you know, peaks and valleys. We're sort of in a strong period now. Could prices go higher? Certainly. Uh, you know, Weeks and months ago, nobody thought prices would be at the levels they're at today. Who knows where they'll be in, in, coming in 2023 and beyond. I'm bullish. I think fundamentally, it'll be really hard to bring the minerals into production to get them into batteries on a qualified basis uh, to keep up with the just massive demand growth we're seeing in EVs and the massive capital that's being invested in the battery business and the cathode business, particularly here in the U.S. For investors that are interested in this market and you know, definitely looking at your company, you had a big run-up in 2020 into 2021. It seems like the stock has kind of been digesting those gains over the last year. You had some really impressive triple-digit earnings growth uh, in the most recent earnings. Can you give your perspective a little bit uh, about that and and what maybe investors should be looking at um, as this deal continues to unfold and things move forward? You know, I'm glad you brought that up. It's really been interesting. Lithium prices are up meaningfully, as you say, uh, year-to-date, probably 3 or 4x, if you include last year, 8 or 10x. Uh, I don't think that's reflected in the share prices. At least I don't think it's reflected in Piedmont share price. Our, our share price is essentially flat over the last 18 months. Uh, that's disappointing. It's hard. I don't really understand it. I mean, we're actually, fr- frankly, down over the last 18 months. Uh, we raised money at $70 a share in March 2021. Stocks at 55 or 60 today. We've made massive progress with our with our project. So I, I don't. I, so I think it's fair to say the market's not pricing in today's lithium prices remaining in place indefinitely. I believe they will be in place for a long time, but the market's not pricing that in. Most lithium stocks are down year to date. Uh, A couple of the producers are up a little bit, 10 to 15% based on the fact that they're capturing this price today. They actually have their sales are are reflecting that. So that's to their benefit. But I think there's considerable upside in quality lithium equities. Um, I think it's difficult for the market to assess them. There are dozens and dozens of pre-production, pre-revenue lithium businesses. Ours is uh, one of the relatively large ones. We have four projects. So it's large and diversified. It's also unique in being the only American developer. We're domiciled uh, here in the United States. We're a U.S. company listed on NASDAQ. There are a lot of others listed in the U.S., but they're not. They're Canadian companies or Australian companies typically. Um, So uh, we think there's big upside. If prices remain as strong as they are, if we deliver on the catalyst of the milestones we have forthcoming, I think there's huge upside in our stock. So I think investors should be focused on that question. You know, for most companies and investors looking at quarterly earnings, sales growth, whatever, we don't have sales yet. Our sales will begin in 2023 and most of our peers don't either. So it's all about checking boxes, uh, you know, getting to first production in Quebec, in our case, getting permits in Tennessee and Carolina, et cetera. And as we do that, I think that the, the market will kind of de-risk our stock. And I think there's considerable upside. Well, Keith, thank you so much for your insight today. We really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Alexis. I, I enjoyed it. And you can follow all of our EV coverage over at investors.com. For Investors Business Daily, I'm Alexis Garcia.